In this screencast, we'll demonstrate JFrag Artifactory's repositories replication capabilities. Locality is an important aspect of modern distribution development. When an organization has development teams across the world, it's very important to make sure that network latency and bandwidth limitations don't harm the development productivity. The way to do this is to ensure that all the development needs, such as external and internal dependencies, exist locally. You're about to see how Artifactory's unique set of replication abilities ensure this locality in any network topology and for any development methodology. Here we have three empty Artifactory instances that we'll configure to get artifacts from one another. Let's start by enabling a push replication for the project release local repository. Push replication is useful when an artifact producer wants to distribute their artifact to other sites, which will use this artifact as a dependency. It's configured in the replication step of the repository's creation and editing wizard. First, we need to provide a cron expression for the replication. Even if the plan is to use an event-driven replication, the cron expression is still required. The scheduled replications will serve as a backup for the event-driven replication, ensuring that all artifacts are synced, even if the event-driven replication of one of the artifacts failed for some reason, for example given network error. Because of the checksum-based nature of Artifactory storage and replication mechanism, no artifact will be transferred if they already exist on the other side, even under a different name or path. So no harm is done when you configure overlapped replications such as both event-driven and scheduled. A good reference for the cron format can be found in the Quartz Scheduler documentation. We'll use one of the examples. The next replication time preview validates the expression. We'll also enable the event-based replication. Every time a new artifact is created in the project release local repository, it will be sent over to the replication targets. Let's set them up. First, we need to provide the URL of a repository in another instance. Then add our credentials to be able to deploy new artifacts into it. Now we can test the connection to verify that everything is OK. We'll repeat this process and add another Artifactory server to replicate to. Now the replication is set up and we're going to deploy an artifact to the origin server. To keep things simple, we won't use any build tool and we'll deploy using the UI. The file is now deployed and we can see it in the tree browser. Now let's see if it was replicated. Indeed, in the second Artifactory instance we can see the exact artifact in the same location. And also in the third. Now let's try another type of replication, a pull replication. This is essentially a scheduled pre-population of a remote repository cache. It's useful for remote sites that need to get the artifacts they require not by the first request as in the normal operation of remote repositories but even earlier. For example, artifacts produced on one day in the remote site can be replicated during the night and sit in cache waiting to be consumed as dependencies the next morning. Pull replication is in addition to the remote repository, and it's configured in the remote repository creation editing wizard. 
we'll create a new remote repository, artifactory-ca, and point it to artifactory-ca instance, where the artifacts will be pulled from. In the next step, we need to provide the credentials to the remote repository. Once this is done, all we need to do is enable the replication and provide a cron expression. Now let's run the replication on demand. The Artifactory REST API reference in the user guide provides the exact REST call for executing a pull replication. All we need to do is issue a simple POST request. There are no required properties in the configuration JSON file so we can skip it altogether. After getting the success message, let's verify that the cache is now pre-populated. Indeed, we can see the file in the artifactory-ca repository cache. This concludes our Artifactory 5 replication integration screencast. You are welcome to visit our user guide to discover more features and our YouTube channel for additional screencasts.